Okay, so let's see an example of figuring out conditional probability given a contingency table. But we're going to start completely from scratch. We're going to build the contingency table using the, uh, using the information given in the problem statement. All right. So the New York State Health Department reports a 10% rate of infection with the HIV virus for at-risk population. So the population, again, I'm, I'm picking 10,000. That's just an arbitrary number. I needed some population total to work with. So 10,000 at-risk. That's what we're dealing with. So let's kind of write down some of these numbers. Uh, we have preliminary screening is correct 95% of the time. So what does that mean? It means that the probability of testing positive, given that they're sick, is 0.95. And the probability of testing negative, given that they're not sick, is also 0.95. And 10% rate of infection means the, what proportion that actually have HIV is 0.1, 10%. So the reason I picked 10,000 is we're, we're going to pretend we have a, we're going to scale everything to 10,000 people. Again, an arbitrary number. I just need something that's large, easy to work with, not too many decimals. So we know that of those 10,000, 90%. Well, actually, ten percent. Ninety-five percent, ten percent have HIV, and ninety percent do not. So, ten percent of ten thousand, ten percent, oh, ninety percent of ten thousand. Okay. So what's next? Well, we know that of those people, of the 10,000, of the 1,000 with HIV, 95% will test positive and 5% will test negative. So 5% of 1,000 is 50. And if we subtract, these have to add up to 1,000. It'll be 950 who test positive out of the 1,000 who actually have it. For the non-HIV, it'll be reverse. 5% will test positive anyway, and 95% will test negative. So we want 95% of 9,000. That's 8550. Okay, it's 95% of... The 9,000, and the other 5% will let the other 450, and that will add up to 9,000. And finally, we can add across the rows. 950 plus 450 is 1,400. 50 plus 8550 is 8,600. And those two numbers add up to 10,000, so everything, everything works out. So what do we try to find? We're trying to find the probability of that the person has HIV if it's known they have tested positive. So, probability HIV given a positive result. Okay, now you might think, oh, that's 0 0.95, but no, 0 0.95 that's positive given HIV. We're talking about HIV given positive, and those are two very different things. So let's remember the formula for conditional probability. We on HIV and positive out of all the positives. So HIV given positive, well, so it, sorry, HIV and positive. So that's this, that's that 950. of 10,000. And now the probability of B 
being positive is 1400 over 10,000. So this is, so I know we have a bad looking fraction here, but remember we do dividing fractions. It's like multiplying the reciprocal. See, did you ever think that dividing fractions would come in handy someday? There you go. 950 out of 1400. So that gives us 0.678. So another way of thinking of this is that about 68% of those testing positive have HIV. So, so about two, you know, it, it, this is actually a rather high number when I mean, you think about it. I mean, it's, it's not 95%, but like I said, th those are two different things. Uh, HIV again. We're talking. We're talking about only at-risk people. That's why the probability is so high. Ten percent. If you look at the overall population, it's much less than ten percent. Probably one percent or less. And so, given that, this number would actually be even lower if the disease were rare. Okay. So we're going to do this problem one more time but instead of filling out the contingency table we're going to use Bayes rule and I'm going to show you that we're going to get the same answer so let me just copy this drag it down so we don't have to rewrite all these Great. bear with me one moment Let's try this one more time. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing using Bayes' rule. She does not want to cooperate today. All right. Okay, so using Bayes' rule, now, again, generally speaking, you would probably want to just fill out the table to get this information. However, to do it using the contingency table, first you have to build the contingency table, and that's a step in itself. So Bayes' rule gets you around building the table. We don't have to worry about using 10,000 and picking those numbers and, and filling in those cells. We're just going to do it purely by formula. So it depends on what you work best with. If you're a formula person, you might want to use Bayes' rule. If you're not, you're more visual, you want to build a contingency table. But that has a bit of a cost, too, because you have to build the table first. So let's, let's see what, uh, what Bayes' rule means in, in this situation. So what we're trying to find is HIV given test positive. And so... It's going to be positive given HIV times probability HIV over, and the same numbers, and then probability of positive given no HIV. Again, if you're if you're in if you're taking Math 146, Bayes' rule is discussed in section 4.8, and this formula is, is given in that section. So we, did, we didn't pull this out of thin air. It's, it's actually in your book or on the CD. So we just got to fill in the numbers. So probability of positive given HIV. Well, we know that already. That's 0.95. Probability of having HIV, that's 10%. Just reading off here. These first two numbers are the same. It, it just those numbers are repeated. And now probability of positive given not HIV. Well, negative given not HIV is 95 percent. So this one's going to be the opposite of that. That's going to be five percent. And the probability of not having HIV is 0.9. 
Okay, so let's crank out the numbers here. 0 0.95 times 0 0.1 is 0 0.095. And 0 0.5 times 0 0.05 times 0 0.9. And that's going to give us 0 0.045. So we have 0 0.095. over 0.14 and we see we're going to get the same 95 over 140 and if we do that math we get the same number we get 679 so we get the same number either way it just depends whether you use the Bayes rule or whether you use the table the, the advantage of Bayes rule is those we do not have to this does not depend on constructing that table we just took the, the probabilities as given and just plugged them in. So, you know, it, 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 in a real-life situation, you're not going to have contingency tables just handed to you. I mean, you will if it's a survey of some kind, but you may not have that information. You may be given only the probabilities. And if you want to avoid having to build that table, this is a formulaic way of doing so. Okay, that about covers it. Thanks for watching.